Saints Row is a series that meant a lot to me as a kid. It taught me valuable life lessons like family isn't always blood and the importance of tipping a hooker because equal pay is what's needed to push this economy forward. I even have a statue of Johnny Gat that I cuddle with every night. Sometimes we even exchange platonic handies if one of us is feeling lonely. So you can imagine it was a surreal moment for me to be invited out to an early capture session for the new Saints Row. A massive thanks to everyone over at Saints Row for making me feel like a real YouTuber. So we jump in and first things first it was character customization. But but I won't show you too much of that as I already have a full video on this. As always, I make our Lord and Saviour John, and it's our first day working a new job with the martial defence industries. We're kind of like the military, but rather than fighting battles in third world countries because freedom, we're fighting battles right here in the USA. Our squad is having a quick debrief before infiltrating to capture our target, and I regret to inform you all that after multiple attempts, I was not able to execute an Order 66 on your own squad mates. You do however get a performance bonus for killing lots of people when impressing your boss. So I make like a freshman college student at a frat party and start going for head. Our APC then blows up and the shrapnel crushes me to death. So yeah, looks like that performance bonus won't be mine anytime soon. The squad finds whereabouts our target is hanging out and we move in to infiltrate. Rather than being a big dummy and standing in front of the enemy gunfire, I deploy a 300 IQ play and stand underneath them so when they drop down I can shoot them in the back. The Samurai would actually call this a low honor, disrespectful move to surprise your enemy like this, but I would also call bombing Pearl Harbor a pretty low honor move. I bust in and tell old matey we've got him surrounded, but he makes a break for it and even manages to steal one of our VTOLs. This however is a Saints Row game, so we don't let him get away. In a stunt that Dwayne The Rock Johnson would be proud of, we winch our trunk to his VTOL, end up laying on the VTOL roof while taking suppressive fire from enemies and unloading our mags into barrels of dynamite, blowing up many, many people. This opening sequence actually really reminds me of a Fast and Furious movie, just with way less oiled up muscly dudes and less sexual tension being released by racing cars really fast. Anyway, the VTOL eventually crashes and we secure our target, all thanks to my valiant bravery, so I think I deserve that performance bonus. We head back to the locker room to take a hot shower and slap other dudes on the arse, because what happens in the locker room stays in the locker room. Okay, so check the fit. I've gone with the timeless classic wife beater in blue jeans, along with these sunglasses that say I'm in my 40s but still go to festivals and take pills. With the afternoon off, it was time to head home in my truck. A slightly unnecessary entrance diving in the window there, as although it was impressive, I've now got to get a new window fitted which won't come cheap. Welcome to Santo Eliso, a beautifully realised desert city. While we drive through bumping a tribe called Quest, it's a beautiful, peaceful drive. With all this sand, it's important to have an all-terrain vehicle like this quad bike, which, although can ram down civilians pretty well, can also handle the sand and the road. As a little bonus, if you smash into fire hydrants, you can also launch the thing about 20 feet in the air. So you best believe that when discovering this, I spent a good chunk of my valuable playing time trying to hit Shorty with the quad bike swanton bomb. Alright, so it's time to meet the crew. We have Kevin, who's the kind of guy to take a gap year in Thailand just to learn how to become a masseuse and then give his homies some free massages when he gets back. We then have Nina, who's a very sweet girl, but clearly grew up with a father that wished she was a son because she's really into cars. Finally we have... Seagulls, can you shut the fuck up? Finally, we have Eli, who's a genius, but also only drinks oat milk and vapes his weed instead of smoking it because it's better for his long-term lung health. We all refuel on a gluten-free quiche that Kevin made. It was lovely, but you've also got to be careful with his food, as sometimes he likes to slip a roofie in there as a quick little practical joke, the cheeky little bastard. One minute you're enjoying some grilled salmon, the next you're waking up on a bed, dehydrated and in desperate need of some rash cream. We come to the realization that we don't actually have enough money to make rent, so we devise a plan to rob a local bank. At first glance, this may seem like a rowdy pack of young adults, not buckling down and getting real jobs, but this is more of a commentary on the absolute state of modern living that four people, three of which are unemployed, sharing an apartment can't make rent. So the bank heist doesn't exactly go as smooth as we all would have liked. We roll up, and I can't decide if this squad looks more likely to steal your girl or steal your chromosomes. Kevin right hooks the dude who probably earns minimum wage and can't even support his family, while Eli jumps the desk and takes the money. Kevin and Eli then take off in their modded sports car, Nina hops in her low rider, and my getaway car is a shitty little yellow sedan. 
Can't help feeling like I'm the one who got a bit stitched up here. So I finally get to my escape car, but a few lads who have nicked all the wheels off it didn't realise I was in Birmingham, but I react appropriately by sticking a grenade in his mouth and then tossing him over to his boy so they blow up together. Turns out this is actually a pretty violent gang called the Panteros, so a gunfight breaks out, but you know your boy has that military training, so I come out on top. Finally, a game where it actually explains why your character is a skillful gunman and not just left to the conclusion of, well, they're American, it's in their DNA I guess. I steal one of the gang's dirt bikes in my escape, but I get so caught up in the chase I accidentally roll through a graveyard and destroy a couple headstones. I apologise, please don't now haunt me for the rest of my life. I also attempt a sick backy, but it goes horribly wrong and I snap my neck and somehow also impressively fly 57 feet in the air, so silver lining I guess, does that look pretty cool? Anyway, we get into some pretty deep shit, but our girl Nina is skilled behind the wheel and bails us out. Don't know why we couldn't have just got in the same car in the first place, but hey, I'm glad we got here in the end I guess. Kevin gives me a quick back massage and I fall asleep very quickly. The next day, I wake up and decide to check out what we have in the open world. I don't actually have access to too much right now, but I can go down to the clothes store, so I check out this independently owned market that runs out the back of a parking lot, because it's good to support small businesses. He literally just sells cowboy boots. That's it. His entire apparel line is cowboy boots. While I respect the hustle, and there's nothing women love more than a cowboy boot, I can't afford rent right now, so I feel it would be financially irresponsible to spend thousands of dollars on some new boots. I head off to work for the day, and on my way there I accidentally do that graveyard thing again, so yeah, I've just kind of accepted I'm gonna have to call a priest in and be doused in holy water at this point. Another day, another dollar at a day job, but at least today's ended with a surprise. I performed so well, I didn't just get a bonus, but I also got a promotion to the head of security by none other than Marshall himself, the boss of Marshall Defense Industries. That cowboy hat and thick moustache tell me he's the kind of guy who doesn't ask for consent. And that's a man who I want to be employed by. I get off work late, but the bread doesn't sleep. So I pick up an extra bounty job dealing with a local meth cookery. This game has a new bounty hunter system where you can just hop on this app. There will be some targets on there available for you to deal with and you can go deal with them for some extra cash. If this was a real app, I'd definitely list my neighbor on there. You see, I was actually mowing my lawn on the weekend and he had the audacity to start mowing his lawn with his ride on lawnmower. Here I am with my petrol powered lawnmower that I started with one pool, thinking I'm the alpha in the neighborhood. But no, now it's him. My wife and kids have left me for him. Leave a like on this video so hopefully it goes viral and I can afford a ride on lawnmower to get my family back. Okay, so if any of you guys have lived in a city before, I'm sure you would know this thing where people will leave old clothes or old furniture on the sidewalk with a sign that says free to take or a sign that says give me a blowy and I'll give you this furniture. Well, at least I've tried that one a few times and it's had a 0% success rate so far, but we'll get that one day. Well, here in Santo Aliso, where most of the residents are criminals, we don't leave furniture. We leave bricks of drugs for others to take and use at their free will. You can use them, you can sell them, you can OD on them. It's up to you, the choice is yours. Here in Santo Aliso, everybody looks after each other. So I arrive at this RV park to complete the bounty, but before I do, I take a quick moment to socialize with the local who are just out here living that RV life. They're eating, drinking, and having a good time, so to join in, I pull a quick one-two hip thrust and totally kill their vibe. I also shoot one of them in the chest and then knock him out clean with a right hook. Socializing isn't something I do often, so I'm not really sure what the protocol was, but I think I did pretty well. I take a wild guess that the meth lab is the RV with the smoke coming out the extractor fan, so I winch it up to my truck and drag it out the park before destroying it, because I wouldn't want to cause any unnecessary violence at a family-friendly RV park. That's just not the kind of guy I am. Once I destroy the RV, presumably with the cook still inside, I get attacked by drug dealers, as your producers getting killed is the drug world equivalent of getting fired. 16k in the bank for murdering a couple people. Not a bad way to make a living, I guess. Anyway, my mate Jim needs some help, so I hop over and pay him a visit. He's trying to start up an auto shop, but had his supplies stolen by another gang in the area called the Idols. The Idols are supposed to be dangerous, but really they're just a bunch of pill munchers whose parents told them they needed to get a job, so now they're supposedly fighting the system. They're actually pretty chill guys, as I just walk in there, but Jesus are they intense. Just look at old matey Cheryl here, 
who doesn't stop freehand glow sticking while I'm talking to her. Or Martin over here, who's literally headbanging so hard I'm worried he might slip a disc in his neck. Anyway, I pop around back and kill about 15 idols, who were all probably so high they didn't even realise I was a real person with a very real gun. I give old matey Jim his stuff back, and in return, he cuts me a percentage of the garage. So yeah, now I'm a now I'm a business owner, I guess. I'm like Jeff Bezos, only not bald. Or rich. Or cute. My first act as part owner is stealing our display bike at the front of the shop that's probably worth at least 50k. Maybe giving me a percentage of the company wasn't the wisest financial decision, but boy does this thing go 0-60 to 60 quicker than women jump to conclusions. With some cash in the bank now, I decided it was time to fix up the fit. I walk out basically wearing the same thing, only now I've got a way more authentic wife beater. It's even got the beer stains and smells like insecure masculinity. I also cop myself a golf glove, because you never know when you might spontaneously go for 18 holes. I then go for a brisk walk around the park because it's important to get those 10,000 steps a day to maintain a healthy lifestyle. No, I'm kidding, I was, just, I was just trying to get thumbnail content. So I'm actually going to skip over the next couple of missions because they contain some pretty significant story moments and I don't want to spoil everything for you guys in this intro. But long story short, we end up battling with some minor depression. There's even a mission where you just have to wallow in self-pity. Damn, what an immersive game. During this mission, your objective is to just walk around the apartment all sad, with terrible posture that will surely lead to long-term back issues if you keep this up. We try to make a waffle for breakfast, but we can't even do that correctly. The waffle just won't go down in a toaster. I mean, good for the waffle I guess. Clearly he slash she slash they didn't give us consent to toast. To get out of this depressive state, I do what all guys do. Blow a good load. Of money. On my car and then drive around the block 13 times, wondering why the loud noises of my turbo doesn't make all women instantly drop their underwear and flock to me. I also remember that I'm in America, so I visit the local gun store and cop some new weapons, because channeling your inner demons using guns is a healthy way to deal with those problems. Lastly, me and the boys decide it's time to create our own criminal empire. As Eli nails here, there's only three things you need to start a criminal empire. A name, a logo, and a base of operations. Sure, a steady supply of illegal merchandise, bodyguards, workers, money launderers, investors would all be great, but it's not necessary if you're willing to put in the hard work yourself. We scout out a location nearby to set up our base, and it's actually a church. How ironic. I mean, let's be honest. It's not like Catholics aren't doing shady things behind the scenes either, so this won't be the first set of crimes this church has seen. There's actually already a bunch of contracted workers at the church right now doing a remodel, so rather than using tactical negotiation skills to get them to leave the property, I just hop in one of their JCBs and start ploughing down literally everything. Here the workers were, thinking they were heading in for another boring day of work. But now, while laying on their deathbed, with loved ones beside them as they suffer from severe multiple injuries, they will always remember this day as an eventful one. Well, at least we've got a cool logo. I'll take it off the whiteboard. We need a name. The Saints. We call ourselves the Saints. Genuinely so surprised at how much I love this game. This was so much fun. A fun open world game. It's it's something that we've been missing in gaming for a while. It's an open world crime sandbox, and we haven't had one of those in so long. So it's just so much fun to jump back into one of those. I, I didn't want to put it down. I wanted to keep playing. I wanted to keep going. And um, before anyone says some bullshit like I've been paid to say this, this was just a capture session. I'm not even required to make a video. If I didn't want to make this video, I didn't have to. There was You didn't even have to record footage. It was just a fun event for people to go to if you wanted to. I wanted to make this video and I felt quite passionate about it because Saints Row is a series that I care a lot about. Thanks Koch Media for the invite, I really appreciate it, but a big thank you to you guys watching this video as well. It wouldn't have been possible without you. Here I am playing a reboot of a franchise that I used to love as a kid. It's, it's insane. I appreciate you all, I love you all. Thank you so much for all these opportunities that you give me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. A big thank you to my motherload Roy Boys and above, Bjorn van den Hatter, Zyfin, TechTTV, and AWO Feed Smith Loadmaster. Thank you.